Thank you very much, Pennsylvania. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be back in this beautiful Commonwealth with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots. That's what you are. That's what you are. And when I look at this crowd and I look at the crowd outside and we stopped a couple of places and nobody's ever seen anything like it, you know, let me tell you, they have us up in the polls, as you know, in Pennsylvania and all over the place, actually. But, but. When they say we're three points up or four, there's no way. It's got to be a hell of a lot more than that. It has to be. It has to be. You know, polls are fake also, just like these people, the fake news. They just... We prove that. We prove that a lot. Well, I just want to thank you. We're here today because early voting begins in Pennsylvania over the next two weeks. And we need each and every one of you to go out. Just don't take anything for granted. We have to win Pennsylvania. Go out and make a plan to vote early, vote absentee, or vote in person on Election Day. But you got to get out and vote. You got to say to your husband, Harry, get the hell off that couch. We can't take any chances because our nation is at stake. Our nation is going to hell. What they've done to our country at the border with inflation, with that Afghanistan nightmare that was the most embarrassing day probably in the history of our country, the way they did that, getting out was fine, but you get out with dignity and strength. What they did was so bad. When you look at October 7th in Israel, it would have never happened. And you look at the Russian attack of Ukraine would have never, ever happened. Not even a thought of it. Think of it. Think of how different this world would have been. Think of how different this, this country would have been. Our country, which is just going so bad. It's so bad. Millions and millions of people are pouring into our country and they come from jails. They come from mental institutions and insane asylums. They're terrorists at a level, the terrorists at a level that nobody's ever seen before, and they let them come in. And you have the border czar, this person that can't even speak. She can't ask a question. She can't, she can't answer a question from... Now she gets out. Oprah Winfrey, who I used to know well, she used to love me until I decided to run for politics. Oh, let's go to Mar-a-Lago, Donald. I love the place so much. No, she used to love me, but uh, once I ran for politics, that was the end of that, and that was okay with me. I couldn't care less because we got to make our country great again. We're going to make it great again, greater than ever before. But Oprah would ask just a simple question, and you get this crazy answer, or you don't get any answer. Just This is not a president. We had four years of this. We're not going to have four more years. We won't survive it. I also want you to promise to find at least one voter and get them out to the polls. Find these people. There's so many people. If everybody votes, you know, it's interesting. Christians, we got to get the Christians to vote. You know, I don't know what it is. Relatively, they don't vote a lot. They go to church and they love church and that's great, but we got to get Christians, evangelicals. We have to get them out to vote. We have to get gun owners. You know, gun owners don't vote. They don't vote. We have to get them out. The NRA gave me their total endorsement. They have every time total, complete endorsement. But they vote at levels that are very low. You know what it is? It's probably rebellion. They're rebelling. But there's nothing to rebel about. You have to get out. If we had Christians voting in full strength, we couldn't lose. If we had the gun owners voting at full strength, we couldn't lose. We have to get gun owners because your guns are under siege. She wants to take your guns away. Our entire nation is counting on the people of this great commonwealth, and I know you will not let us down. You're not going to let us down. We got to get out and vote. You can start right away. You know that, right? Now we have this stupid stuff where you can vote 45 days early. I wonder what the hell happens during that 45. Let's move uh, the... See these votes? We've got about a million votes in there. Let's move them. We're fixing the air conditioner in the room, right? No, it's terrible. What happened the last time was disgraceful, including right here. 
But we're not going to let it happen again. Too, you know, too big to rig, right? That's one way you do it. Can't let it happen. We got to take our country back from these horrible people because if we win Pennsylvania, we win the whole thing. It's very simple. Forty-three days from now, forty-three days we've been waiting for four years. Four years. We had people that were so incompetent. They were the most incompetent leaders in the whole world. And she is worse than sleepy Joe Biden. She's worse. She's worse. Forty-three days from now, we're going to win Pennsylvania and take our country back, and we're going to be so happy. And it'll be the most important day and the most important vote in the history of our country because we're losing our country. I mean, somebody I heard the other day, pretty smart person, and you think about it, and it could be true. They said, if we don't win this election, there may never be another election in this country. It could happen. Look at Venezuela. Venezuela was the most prosperous country, and now you take a look. And can you believe these stupid people are buying oil from Venezuela? from Venezuela, who was our enemy. They foreclosed on his airplane, a crappy old airplane. But they're giving him billions of dollars for oil. It's not oil, it's tar. It's the worst. And you know, for the environmentalists, you know where they cure the tar? Where they take the tar and they make it into beautiful oil? Used in Texas, and it all goes flying up in the air. You gotta look into that one for all of you wonderful people that talk about the environment, like I do, like I do, like many of the people in this room do. But they do it. They, the oil refinery is in, it's the only one that can do it because it literally is tar. It's not good stuff. We have the best stuff and we have the most. We have more liquid gold under our feet and we're buying oil from Venezuela. We don't need it at all. It's crazy. These people are crazy. What a nice looking man. Who is that? Oh, that's Trump. What a wonderful looking person. I'm, I'm just checking out the hairstyle as I'm talking. I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm checking. I'm talking. I'm looking up. I'm saying, I don't love it. Yeah, everyone don't love it. What the hell can you do? There's nothing I can do about it, right? We're stuck with it. Kamala Harris is reportedly given a speech in Pittsburgh. You know, her speeches are very short. About her plan to, quote, build wealth. She doesn't know anything about building wealth. But she's been in office for three and a half years. She's saying what she's going to do if she becomes president. But she's been there almost four years. She hasn't done anything except destroy our country with millions of people that shouldn't be here. And inflation. And inflation. What the damage that Sleepy Joe, you know, I'm tending to call him Sleepy Joe lately because I call him Crooked Joe. But now he's not like, is he, pre who's, who's our president? We don't even have, do we have a president? Why doesn't he leave? Why doesn't he leave? Now think of it. Think of it. I call him Crooked Joe. That was very effective. It got him out of the race. I mean, guess what? No, we had a debate, and he didn't do too well in that debate. And they came to him, and they said, you're down 21 points, and you're going to lose. This can only happen to me. So I end up with somebody new. But here's the thing, all I have to do is expose her for what she is. She's a communist, okay? She's a communist. And this country is not ready for a communist, and hopefully never will be, because that doesn't work. Kamala talks about all these things that she's going to do, but she's been here. Think of it, she's been here for almost four years and she's not done anything. I will do this, I will do that, I will do that. What the hell? She could do them today. You know, they talk about the border. Oh, we have a plan for the border. I didn't have any help. I had a very hostile Congress. And what I did is I said, close the border to the Border Patrol. They're great. And the border was closed. 
We had the safest border in the history of our country. We had, and that border was a mess. You know, in 2016, I think I won maybe because of the border. The border was very bad. And in 2020, I couldn't talk about the border because there was no problem. My people, my geniuses back there, they all said, sir, you can't really talk about the border. There's no problem. I said, well, I want to at least talk about it. I fix it. They said, people don't care, sir. They don't care. So I didn't talk about the border, but we did get millions of more votes. If, if you remember 2020, we got millions more votes. Millions. Look at that guy with a rug on over there. Look at him. Look at that handsome guy. You look good. He looks good. But we got millions more votes. But I'll tell you what, we're, and we've been all over Pennsylvania today, 2016 or 2020, we never had the enthusiasm that we have right now. Look at this. Look at this. And the reason is because they're so bad. You know, we never had anything to compare it to. They're so bad. Four years of destroying our country. We don't have a great country anymore. Remember, I had CAG, keep America great. But I couldn't use it because I said America's not great. I hate to say it, but America soon will be greater than ever before. You watch. We got to win the election. We got to win the election. And I, I can't call her Harris either. You know, Harris, when I say Harris, nobody knows. Does that make sense? I say, and when Harris, everyone says, who's Harris? Nobody knows this person. No, they don't know her by the name Harris. They know her Kamala. It's strange. The name Harris. And when Harris, and people say, who is that Harris? Nobody knows who the hell I'm talking about. Do you know that? Idiot. Lee, nobody knows you're a good lawyer. Maybe we have to change your name. You know, but nobody knows a nice name, Harris. I know some people named Harris. They're nice people. She happens to be not a nice person. She happens to be a person that's destroyed everything she's ever touched. Kamala's ruinous economic policies have already cost the typical household $29,000 through rampant inflation. $29,000 per household. She's a one-woman economic wrecking ball, and if she gets four more years, her radical agenda will smash the economy into rubble and grind your financial situation right into the dust. You can't have it. You can't have it. We've had it. We've had it. The guy is incompetent, and she's incompetent also. She had the other interview with the other guy, who was a nice guy, I think, from Philadelphia, from Pennsylvania. And he was a nice guy. He was asking her all these snow They only take... They don't take like I do. Anybody who wants to go, go, what the hell difference does it make? They have, and how, how dishonest was ABC? It was three on one. How about this David Muir and the other woman I never heard of? I don't know, how the hell did she get there? I never heard of her. But David Muir, when I say crime numbers are rising, he interrupts me, kept, kept interrupting. And he said, oh, we have, uh, we have it by fact that crime numbers are going down. I said, anybody that thinks crime is going down is a serious brain problem. <laughs> and then it got announced the following day that Trump was right, that crime was up 45%. How about them? And I thought she was terrible in the debate. She, she didn't answer any questions. All she did is tell, tell lies, bloodbath. Uh, she talked about Charlottesville. All these things were all, you know, I hate the word debunked, but it says it. They were all debunked, every one of them. And, it, and people said it. Well, the radical left didn't say it, but they've all been fully debunked. All she did was tell lies. But when it came time to ask a question like, what are you going to do about inflation? What are you going to do about keeping taxes low? She was unable to even talk. But the one on Oprah was the worst one, in my opinion. Oprah wanted to climb under the table. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> she couldn't answer the simplest question. So vote Trump and your incomes will soar, your net worth will skyrocket, your energy cost and grocery prices will come tumbling down, and we will bring back the American dream, bigger, better, and stronger than ever before, the American dream. 
We don't talk about the American dream anymore. You know that, Mr. Congressman? What a great congressman. I'm going to introduce you guys, but what a good warrior you are. Thank you. We don't talk about the American dream, right, anymore. We used to talk about it all the time. Today, they don't talk about it. Don't lose hope. We have to have hope. Don't lose hope. Our country's an embarrassment. The whole world is laughing at us. We're going to be stronger. They weren't laughing at us four years ago. They were saved. They were taking, they were, they were not, they were not unhappy to see me head off. And they said, thank goodness, we'll never have to see him or deal with him again. You know, China had to pay $472 billion in tariffs. No other president <laughs> took in 10 cents from China. Not 10 cents. No president took in 10 cents. And remember this, and I just say this. If you look at Ukraine and Russia, but you know they say Russia. I stopped the Russian pipeline. It's called Nord Stream 2. Nobody ever heard of it until I came along. I stopped the biggest economic development job, the biggest job they've ever done. I stopped it cold. When Biden came in, he let them build, but he killed our Keystone pipeline, which we needed. He killed Keystone, so he killed the particular. And remember this about Russia. Under Bush, they took a lot. Under Biden and Barack Hussein Obama, has anyone ever heard of him, Barack? <laughs> Barack Hussein, a lot of people say he's actually running the country right now. I don't think so. I don't think so. But some people say he's running our country. But under, I don't think it's Biden. <laughs> under Barack Hussein Obama, they took a lot, right? Under Biden, they're taking everything. They're taking everything. This is Russia. They're taking everything. I mean, Ukraine is, is destroyed. It's destroyed. You know, they could have made a deal. And you didn't even have to make a deal. Putin was never going in if I were president. But even if he did, you could have made a deal. Now the whole place is destroyed. The cities are knocked down. Millions of people are dead. Far more people are dead than anybody knows. Far more people. When you see those cities get knocked down and they say two people are injured, it's all a lot of fake news, I'll tell you. The people are dead, millions of people. And now the whole place, the whole place has been, the cities have been knocked down, the whole place. They could have made a deal three years ago and everything would be happy, vibrant. Their heritage wouldn't have been broken. Those beautiful golden towers are taken down. All of those beautiful ancient towers a rubble on the ground now. I mean, any deal they make, what's the deal? They have to go back. They'll be, take 100 years to rebuild, and you can never rebuild it like it was. That should have never happened. It would have never happened if I was president. And you know what? It didn't happen. And even radical left lunatic Democrats say, I will say, if Trump was president, it wouldn't have happened. Putin would have never done it. I said, don't do it, Vladimir. Don't even think we're not going to do it, Vladimir. I said, Vladimir, we're not going to do that, Vladimir. And China. I had the same, almost identical conversation with President Xi of China. Don't go in. Don't go in. He's got planes circling Taiwan. He, they're circling. he wants that so badly. And Vladimir wanted it badly. That was the apple of his eye. Ukraine was the apple of his eye. But I said, don't do it. He would have never gone in. Would have never happened. All, this, all these things would have never happened. But Ukraine now, I see Zelensky is here. I think Zelensky is the greatest salesman in history. Every time he comes into the country, he walks away with $60 billion. Billion! Walks in with $60 billion. He wants them to, he wants them to win this election so badly. But I would do differently. I will work out peace before I'm even before. As president-elect, if I win this election, the first thing I'm going to do is call up Zelensky and call up President Putin, and I'm going to say, you got to make a deal. This is crazy. Crazy. They asked Biden, when was the last time you spoke to Putin? He didn't know. Of course he didn't know. What a stupid question. Of course he doesn't know. How would he know a thing like that? But it's been like years, years. And they keep bombing, 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 cities pouring down, bombing, bombing. It's horrible, horrible. Actually, they're reduced now to using young boys and old men. 
young boys and old men because their people have been killed. So many of their people have been killed that they are using young boys to fight the war and old men. How about that? It's what a horrible thing has happened just because and it's it's our fault because it's a war that should have never been allowed to happen. And we had the power that it would never have happened. We have an incompetent leader in Biden and we have somebody who's worse in this new one that they threw into the ring. Central to Kamala's agenda for economic destruction is her plan to impose the largest individual tax hikes in American history onto our public, the largest small business tax hike in history, the largest capital gains tax hike in history. How about the capital gains tax, right? How about that one? And even the brand new wealth confiscation tax or unrealized capital gain. How about that? Unrealized. You know, I know a lot of people that are rich, but they have no cash. They're rich as hell, but they have, what are they going to do? They have to pay cash to unrealize. In other words, you pay a capital gain tax, even though you're not selling your property, your stock, or whatever it might be. It's never, it's, I don't think it's ever even been done. It's been thought of by communist nations, but I don't think it's ever been done. You know, her father is a fascist. He's a Marxist. And he's a teacher of Marxist economics. What the hell are we doing? What are we doing? Where have we come? Which will annihilate, if they do that unrealized capital gain, which I can't believe they can pull it off. But if they do it, it'll annihilate the stock market and wipe out the savings of millions of seniors and middle class families. It'll wipe out our country. Our country will be driven in, I think anyway, it'll happen. If you know, a lot of people say the only reason the stock market's high is everyone thinks I'm going to win the election. I believe that's true. A lot of the biggest, smartest. Uncle Sam, look, it's Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam is here. Do you agree with that? Uncle Sam says, uh, no, a lot of people agree. I think it's going to be uh, horrible. We don't win for so many other reasons, too. but. You'll have a depression like 1929. Kamala Harris is the tax queen, and she's coming for your money, she's coming for your pensions, and she's coming for your savings, unless you defeat her in November and you want to take away your guns. Remember that. Always remember that. As president, I will keep Kamala's greedy hands out of your pockets, and we will deliver gigantic tax cuts. I gave you the largest tax cuts in history, and we are going to go further. That's what created. That's what created the greatest economy. You know, when they say compare yourself now, but do something else. Compare costs now. Compare the cost of bacon with the cost of bacon four or five years ago. Compare the cost of just groceries. I mean, some of these things have gone up four, five, six times. Energy, interest rates. How about I had, I was at 2% interest rates. Now they're at 10%, but you can't get the money. So you got to keep going up. Okay, you're not at 10% if you can't get the money. We will have, I'm very proud of this, and then she copied me on one of them, only one. I'm waiting for the others. We will have no tax on tips. That was an easy one. We will have no tax on overtime. You work overtime. And for our seniors who have been decimated, decimated by the stupidity of inflation, these people, what they did to you on inflation, we will have no tax on Social Security benefits. No tax. You've been decimated. They took it all away. They took it all away from you. And for all the suburban households paying high property taxes here in Pennsylvania, I will restore the SALT deduction. Do you know what that is, SALT deduction? You will, to save you thousands of dollars. All right, I don't, maybe I shouldn't bother with pay. That's a good one, but you guys don't know what the hell it is. That's a good one. People think of New York, but it actually affects you very much, too. I think I'll keep it off of Pennsylvania. You don't care. You didn't like that one so much, but it's actually, it's actually pretty good. 
It's no wonder that Kamala Harris was just officially endorsed by IRS agents. Do you believe it? That's when you'd say, uh, I'd rather not have that endorsement. But I've been endorsed by virtually every police group in the entire nation. Every police group. Almost every sheriff's group, every police group, every, every one of them. We just had one, the Fraternal Order. We just had four, 400,000 policemen. That's the biggest of all the unions, and they endorsed me. And, and this is the first time in decades, just got endorsed by the rank-and-file members of the Teamsters, which I happen to think is amazing. That was a surprise. That's automatic for the Democrats, and they, uh, now the bosses didn't endorse me, but they had a problem, because we got, they got 30% of the vote, we got actually 60 or 61% of the vote, can you believe it? So the people that were in the 61, the people that won us, they said, well, how come you didn't endorse them? Why do you, they're just going to take a pass, but maybe that's okay, that's all right. We know where they stand, and that's good. Kamala Harris is the candidate of the tax collectors and the Washington bureaucrats. I am the candidate of the American worker, and I always will be. I always will be. But perhaps Kamala's biggest tax hike of all is her vicious attack on Pennsylvania energy. You are under attack. If anybody here believes that she will let your energy industry continue, like fracking, you should immediately go to a psychiatrist and have your head examined. On dozens of occasions, Kamala said that she intends to ban fracking. I'm going to ban it. I'm going to ban it. I think we have a clip. Would you like to see a clip? I spend a lot of money on these clips. I spend a lot of money on these clips. That's why I am committed to passing a Green New Deal, creating clean jobs, and finally putting an end to fracking once and for all. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mama La Kamala just don't give a frack. Isn't that great? He's not very funny. Can you... That guy. Those three guys, they're being blown away by Gutfeld. You know, Gutfeld, totally dominant. Those, those three guys. You remember that guy? When I first ran, it was like 2015, thinking about running, I was gonna run. I went on his show, right? And he goes, The Tonight Show, which is dying. They're all dying. Where's Johnny Carson? Bring back Johnny. It made you appreciate, right, Uncle Sam? It made you appreciate the greatness of Johnny Carson and these guys. These three guys, they're so bad, all three of them. All three of them. But this one, I go on his show, and he goes, is that your real hair? I said, yeah. He said, do you mind if I mess it up? I said, I'd prefer, no, do you remember this? I said, I'd prefer it if you didn't, to be honest, but if you have to. So he grabs it, and he starts really going crazy, right? And everybody laughed, and it was a big thing, it was a big hit, it was all over the place, and he got great ratings and all. And six months later, he went out because he was under pressure to apologize because he humanized Donald Trump. Do you remember? And he made, he stood up and he said, I'd like to apologize six months ago or whatever it was. I messed up Donald Trump's hair and it humanized him and he became president. And I, I would like to apologize. How weak and pathetic is a guy like that? And his show died, but the other two shows are dying. The one on ABC is dying. He was the worst host in the history of the Academy Awards. Remember I did that? Remember I wrote a, a, I put a truth. Everybody should go to truth immediately. And by the way, we also love Elon, I have to tell you. Oh Gave me a big endorsement, big one. But remember in the Academy Awards, I said how he's the worst host in the history of the Academy Awards. And this stupid guy goes up, and just before the best picture of the year, the show is almost over. They're waiting for the best picture of the year. He gets up and he says, and his wife said, please don't do it. Please, darling, don't go out. His manager said, don't do it. I have to do it. He goes out and reads my truth to the entire audience right before the best, prime time, the best picture. 
And it said basically, he is the worst host of the history. He reads the whole thing. And then I think he said something like, ha, 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 he thinks he bothers me or some crap like that. I said, he's one of the dumbest human beings ever. He should have listened to his wife. What a dope. But all three of them are bad. The hatred. You know, it's supposed to be comedy. It's hatred. It's like terrible. But they're dying. And did anyone see the gut fell for last week? Yeah. So actually, I have to, I said it in the show. You know, so Gutfeld had the highest ratings in his history. And it was the number one show of the week on all of television, not just on cable, on all of television. It beat all the network shows. But, but I told I told her the show, Gutfeld hated me for a long time, hated me. And then he started saying, you know, I'm starting to, he didn't know me, but he hated me. People that know me like me, but he just couldn't stand me. And he was pretty strong on that. And then what happened is he started to say, you know, I don't like him, but he gets everything done. He rebuilt our military. We have no wars. He took out the worst terrorists in history. We don't have any problems. We didn't have one terror attack during my administration with all the terror attacks all over the world. We didn't have countries fighting each other. They wouldn't have done it without my permission. They would call me up to ask whether or not they could go to war with some other country. And I said, you can't do that. And if you do that, I'm going to put big, big taxes all over your country. Okay, we won't do it. And they'd call me up the next day. We've decided not to go to the war. We had no wars. Israel was free. Uh, Ukraine was free. They weren't. The whole world, Viktor Orban, who's the prime minister of Hungary, he said, if you want to solve, because now everything's blowing up. The Middle East is going to end up in World War III. Ukraine's going to end up in World War III. So many different. We could end up in World War III with incompetent leadership. With smart leadership, it would never happen. But it's tougher now than it would have been three, four years ago. I mean, the whole place. And more importantly, no matter what you do, you can't get those cities back. You can't get that civilization back. And you can't get three or four million lives back. You can't do it. But Gutfeld said, on the show, he said, you know, I don't love this guy, but man, everything he touches, he fixes, he gets it done. Our country was doing great. We had the best economy. And he asked for an interview, and I said, you know, uh, I'll do it, but I'm begrudgingly, 10 minutes. I, I don't really want to do it because he doesn't like me. I guess I don't, I don't like anybody that doesn't like me, I'll be honest. When they don't like me, I don't like them, okay? Sounds childish. Look at the wall. Mr. Wall, stand up, please, Mr. Wall. When they don't like me, Lee, I don't like them. That's the way it is. Call it a personality defect. But we did an interview, and it was supposed to be 15 minutes, and it lasted for two and a half hours. It just never stopped. There was a great chemistry. We actually liked each other. And he likes me. And he took that interview and he put it on five shows and his ratings went through the roof and he's held it. I mean, he's the hottest guy on late night and beyond late night, maybe in a lot of ways. But we love Sean Hannity too, right? And we love Laura and we love Jesse and Janine. And Pete, we like Pete, Hexa. Ainsley's good. We have a lot of good people. And then we have some bad ones too, including on Fox. Do you ever notice on Fox, they put me on, I do a great job, and then they follow me with a horrible commercial, you know? I, I say, what the hell is it going to be doing it if you had, Roger Ailes never allowed bad commercials. What's the purpose of me doing a nice show and then they put nine horrible commercials on, which are all lies, but, or they put somebody on that's good, and then they always feel like they have to put somebody on his bed. So the net result is a neutral, and you say, what are you doing it for? You can't do that. Fox should put just the good people on, the people that want to make America great again. They shouldn't put the guys that are professional scammers on. And they shouldn't allow bad commercials. Just a few months ago, Kamala imposed a natural gas export ban. Can you believe that? That is brutalizing Pennsylvania energy jobs. You know about it, right? And Kamala's Green New Deal insanity, I call it the Green New Scam, is shutting down power plants all across America. As a result, Pennsylvania electricity prices are up, despite all of the oil and gas and everything, are up 35% in a very short period of time. 
with all that stuff underneath you, underneath your feet, in particular you. Since she took office, we are looking at another rise now of anywhere from 30 to 50 percent very quickly. And we have so much. We have so much. And you're hit about as hard as anybody. If you vote for me, I will cut your energy and electricity prices in half within 12 months. We're going to cut them down in half. I will terminate the natural gas export ban, which makes it impossible for you to sell your product to a lot of countries that want it desperately because they don't have what we have. We are so rich. We have the greatest, and we don't use it. It makes you really. We have all of this stuff more than anybody. We don't use it. I will get Pennsylvania energy workers pumping, fracking, drilling, and producing like never before. Right? And I don't know about how you feel, but I do, because this was the greatest. This was the greatest company in the world 60 or 70 years ago. We are also going to keep U.S. steel right here in America. We have to be strong and powerful again, and we must put tariffs on foreign predators. They are predators so that they don't destroy our steel industry. The people that like me the most are the steel. They were dead when I came into office. They were dead. And I put taxes on China. China was dumping massive amounts of steel to destroy our companies. I put a 50 percent tariff. Then I raised it in some cases to 100 percent. And at a certain level, they said, no mas. We're not doing it. Remember, no mas. Roberto. We love Roberto Durando. And no mas, no mas. And they said, no mas, and that was the end of it. And our steel companies were saved and thrived. And now we're losing our steel companies again because we have stupid people in the White House. We must keep our steel companies, and we must keep making steel more than any. If we have a war, are we going to call up, gee, uh, China, could you send us some steel, please? Oh, I forgot about that. If we have a war, think of it. If we need it for our military, how do we build our tanks? How do we build our ships? We don't have, we wouldn't have any steel. We have to make U.S. steel great again. It doesn't have to be what it was. It was the greatest company in the world. Think of it. U.S. steel was the greatest company in the whole world. That would be like whatever. You know, today our big companies are like Google and this and that. They're not the same. U.S. steel is the strength. Google is all. Give me a break. Not the same. Not the same. You see all the stuff that Google and Facebook and you know all what? They got caught cheating on the last election, the bad things they did, the 51 agents and all of the stuff. The laptop, remember, it was Russia. It was Russia, Russia, Russia. No, it was Hunter, 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 as we said. And they affected, you know, they affected the election very much. It came out many, many points, many 11 points, 12 points. Uh, but that's what we have. And we can never let that happen again. And I said, we're going to go after anybody that gets caught cheating on the election. We're going to go after them harder than anyone's ever been sought before. Because these people are really a threat. They are a threat to democracy. The Democrats are a threat to democracy. That's the real threat. Under my plan, America will be a manufacturing superpower once again. We will be the envy of the world, and we will build that incredible future right here in Pennsylvania. Boy, did I come close. I almost said, don't, I better be careful, because, you know, if I even meant, they'll report it, because I don't want to be. Should I say it, Uncle Sam? I almost said the state of Pennsylvania, but I said, I meant the Commonwealth. I never said the state. I was able to catch it, because I'm cognitively very strong. <laughs> very strong. Very, very strong. I was able to catch it. Did you notice that? Right here in... And I stopped for a second. I said, Pennsylvania, I didn't want. Oh, that's a bad mistake. When you do the state of Pennsylvania, you get yourself. I've seen it. Well, the worst was Biden. He's in Florida, and he says, thank you for being so nice. I love Iowa. I've always loved it. I said, 
Remember, he was in New Hampshire, and he said he was in Maine. He was in... I never did that. You know, if you do that, it's career-threatening. As it turned out, it was career-threatening. But if you do that once, if you, you know, Winston Churchill was this great speaker. Great. I get much bigger crowds than him, but nobody ever says I'm a great speaker. Winston Churchill was a great speaker. If he ever was in London and he said, uh, I'm in Beirut, or if, because Biden is capable of that, he could go that far off. And, you know, he, he compared Florida to Iowa, and then he said it was Idaho, the greatest potato place in the world. He said, and he said with Iowa, remember, he said, I love the potatoes in Iowa. No, he meant, right? He didn't mean Iowa. I mean, the whole thing. But I said, you know, if you were Winston Churchill and you make a mistake as to location, like, I'm here with you, and if I say, it's great to be in the great state of Illinois, could happen. No matter how great your speech is, you could make the greatest speech in history, and people will go, that was a disaster, right? He did it all the time, but she's worse than him. I'm telling you, watch. She's not as smart as him. He's not smart. He never was smart. He wasn't smart 40 years ago. Always, he was a hale and hearty guy, well met. Did you ever hear Shakespeare? He was hale and hearty and well met, but he wasn't a smart person. But she is a very dumb person, and we can't do that. We can't do that. I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be rude. Another front in Kamala's war on workers is her gigantic migrant invasion. Over the past three years, border czar. Do you notice she said, I'm not a border czar. She was a border czar for three and a half years. Now she's saying I had nothing to do. Whether she was the border czar or just the person in charge of the border, it's been the worst thing ever, maybe one of the worst things ever to happen to our country. Look at what's happening in Springfield, Ohio. Look at what's happening, what's happened What's happened to that beautiful town? Look at what's happened to Aurora in Colorado, where you have a radical left Democrat governor who doesn't have a clue. He's so scared. The Venezuelans are attacking. They're taking, they're in the real estate business. They're taking over real estate. They're in there like I was, but they take it over with guns. I took it over with the brain. They take it over with guns. But they're in, think of it, Aurora. And they have weapons that the military doesn't even have, AK-47s. I learned about AK-47s three weeks ago. That's not a, that's not a nice. I'm getting very good at learning about weapons. I'm learning a lot about guns. Over the past three years, Border Czar Harris has inundated small towns all across America with hundreds of thousands of migrants. Not only has she invited them across our border, unfortunately, she's also illegally flown them in. Remember, she was making excuses. No, no, we haven't really uh, had too many. And then we found out that they're flying in by big, big, beautiful jets. They're flying over the border. She's trying to say that the border was sort of secure. It wasn't secure. Although the greatest graph in the history of graphs a thing that I love perhaps as much as any person I've ever met is my wonderful graph on immigration and the lack of people coming. Do we have that graph? Can we put that graph up? This is my favorite graph. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love that graph, Lee. David, I love it. Oh, is that a beautiful? I don't care what it says. I don't care if it said I did a lousy job. That's the most beautiful piece of paper I've ever seen. You see the arrow in the bottom? That was the week that I left office. See the arrow in the bottom, the big red arrow? That's the lowest level. This was done by the Border Patrol. This looks like a Trump special. It wasn't. That was done by the U.S. Border Patrol, who are phenomenal. ICE is phenomenal. That was done by the Border Patrol. That was the lowest level of immigration we've ever had in the country. And then these idiots, these stupid idiots took over. And look at what happened to our numbers. Look at what happened. Look at what happened to the numbers. But is that the most beautiful? I love the colors, the blue, the gold, the red. There's everything about it I love. I love the stars. 
Because if I didn't look over to the right to see that beautiful graph, I said, put up that graph, please. <laughs> if I didn't look over to the right, I wouldn't be here with you tonight, and that would be a very terrible thing. <laughs> what a beautiful thing. Think of it, Uncle Sam. Immigration saved my life. Think of it. Immigration saved my life. No, it's great. Well, thank you. And thank you. I sleep with that pace every night. I go to bed with it. Say, darling, darling, it's time to go to bed. Let's go. Uh, what a beautiful sight. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Great job that you were able to get it so fast. I didn't think we were going to be using it. I didn't think I was going to use it in Butler. It was just, I always use it at the end if I use it. I only use it. You would know you go to every damn rally, right? He's at every rally. And he makes a lot of money. I think he's probably an accountant. He's a CPA. He's a genius. But he goes to every rally. But, right? I, I rarely use it. But when I use it, it's always on my left. And it's always at the end of the speech. This time, I just thought of it. As you can see, I don't use the teleprompter too much. Isn't it nice to have a president that doesn't have to use a teleprompter? <laughs> Isn't that nice? Right? It's really nice. Thank you very much. By the way, we had one, uh, we had a rally in Lee's part of the woods out on Long Island, and that was unbelievable. We filled up the, where the Islanders play, and the Nets were playing, they used to play there. A big, like a Madison Square Garden type arena. We filled it up, we could have filled it up three times. It was an amazing, just less than a week ago, right? That was great, Lee was there. Kamala has illegally flown in more than a half a million migrants, right? when she was saying, no, no, we don't want to do that. And she's got, par these guys actually want these people in our country. It's not even believable. Working with left-wing nonprofits to inundate Pennsylvania communities, changing the character of small towns and villages all over our country and changing them forever. They will never be the same. They will never be. Do you think Springfield will ever be the same? I don't think. The fact is, and I'll say it now, you have to get them the hell out. You have to get them out. I'm sorry. To get them out. Can't have it. Can't have it. They've destroyed it. It's terrible. It's terrible to say, and it's a tough thing to do. You know, you're going to take in some murderers and things and you'll put them on the planes and the buses and you're going to start doing it. Dwight Eisenhower holds the record, believe it or not. He was a moderate kind of a guy, General Eisenhower, president. And he has the record. He couldn't stand people pouring into our country and he took a lot and took them out. He's very strong on, on that. And we have to be strong. We have no choice because this is not sustainable by any country. There's no country that can do this. I mean, what were they thinking when they did it? What were they thinking? This is like, who would allow men to play in women's sports? Well, this is bigger. This is bigger. But it's the same thought. Who would allow? We're allowing open borders where millions of people that we have no idea who they are, where they come from. We don't know if they're murderers, if they're killers. Many are murderers, though, because prison populations are being released into our country. And these are tough people. They're tough people, and they're vicious, evil people in many cases, and we can't, you know, we can't have, but it's very tough because we'll take one young woman with two children, and they'll put them in a bus to take them back to some country, and it'll be put in the fake news, and it'll be a terrible story. It's terrible, and the whole country will turn against. It's a very tough thing to do. We have to do it carefully. But we have to get murderers and drug dealers and all these people that are coming into our country. We have to get them out of here. It's not sustainable. And not far from here, the 4,000-person town of Charleroi. Does people, do people, oh, you know Charleroi? 
in Charleroi, Pennsylvania, seen a 2,000 percent increase in the population of their town. Do you know that, right? They have all — has your town changed slightly? Where are you from, Char Charleroi? Put up — okay, good. I just took a picture with that handsome guy. So has your — would you say your town has changed just a little bit over the last couple of months? <laughs> it's like, is it a different place, totally different place? It's what? It's completely different. Where are the other people that started screaming about Charleroi? Where are they? Okay. Has your, has your beautiful town changed? Yes. It's, it's, you can't do it. 80%, think of it, of the capital, and it's, it's just, it's composed of lawless gangs. We're not gonna, we're not gonna do this. All of the gang members, MS-13, they're being brought into our country because Venezuela doesn't want it. Remember this, Venezuela has sent their criminals into our country, has emptied their jails, not fully. They've still got people, but I, I don't know why, because I would have been worse than him. I would have emptied it. I would, if I ran one of those countries, Honduras, uh, any, any of them, even Mexico, to an extent, is doing it, and they shouldn't be doing it at all because they're getting rich off of us. They're getting rich. They shouldn't be doing it at all. They're going to stop immediately. But so many of these countries, I would do it. If I were the president of one of these countries, you know, and they're all smart, street smart people, I would have had them all. I don't know why Venezuela does it, but they have a lot of the jail population in our country. They probably couldn't get enough buses and planes. That's probably the only reason. But they're dumping jail populations, the criminals of the street, into our country. And there's only one thing that can happen, and it's really bad. And it's happening. And now you see it. And I said this three years ago when I heard about it. I said, this is only going to be bad. Think of the cruelty Kamala Harris is inflicting on the people of Pennsylvania. You live in a small town your whole life. You pay your taxes. You really are exemplary. You pay everything, you do everything, you love your town, you love your country. You know the town so well by name, by you're just so proud of it. And suddenly she flies in thousands and thousands of migrants from the most dangerous places on earth, and they deposit them right smack in the middle of your community. And you're a nice person, and you want to be politically correct. I see it, like, I see it very much in uh, the cities, like the governor of Colorado, the guys are real stiff. But he's up talking, and he says, well, these are fine people. He, he doesn't want to say that they have AK-47s and they're taking over large portions of real estate. He doesn't want to say it. They want to be politically correct. It's happening in all of these towns that we're talking about because the mayors are afraid, and they're afraid politically, too. They don't know, am I supposed to say this is good, or am I supposed to say... And Democrat mayors, every one of them, is saying it's a wonderful thing, and not one of them believes it. But they're afraid to go against the stupid party that's in Washington. So now your schools can teach because the majority, they can't teach because the majority of students don't speak the language. The housing market is destroyed. Crime is rampant. The jobs are taken by migrants illegally imported to our countries. Your school classes, you can't get in. You can't get into your hospitals. Nobody can get into the hospitals. They're driving to hospitals three, four hundred miles away. The media is desperate to stop us from having this conversation. The fake news, look at all of them. They have a lot of people. There. Oh, they have some of the big ones. They have some of the big ones. Wow. Oh, that's very impressive. Uh, they have some good ones, too. But that's exactly why we must have this conversation. We have to have it, because the media doesn't want to talk about it. You know, they don't want to do anything that's going to embarrass Kamala, because I don't know why. Number one, the country's going to die. They're going to die. They're already dying to a large extent. But if I get elected, they're going to do much better, because we get higher ratings. We get the high. You know, Greg Gutfeld got the highest ratings in the history of his show. And the, think of it, the number one show of the night, including networks. Nobody knows that. And maybe, I think, the number one show of the week. No, but they'll do much better, but they don't realize that. They haven't realized that yet. This isn't an attack on any group of people. It's common sense. We're really talking about, you know, we're the party of common sense. We're conservative, all that. Just, we are the party of common sense. That's what we are. That's what we are. We want to have...
strong borders, great education, school choice. Does everybody like school choice? We want to we want to move the Department of Education. We're ranked at the bottom of the list, the worst. We spend more money per pupil than any other country by far. And yet we're at the bottom of the list. Out of 40, we're ranked about number 40. And I'm going to close the Department of Education and move education back to the states. And we're going to do it fast. Maybe I'll have you do that. I'll use Lee. Maybe I'll have you. You could do it. That's not too easy. We'll get somebody great. We'll get Lee Zeldin is here with us tonight. We'll get, I think we'll, I think that's the job for Lee. Or Vivek. Or we'll get somebody. We like Vivek. We need somebody with a lot of energy, a lot of strength, energy, and intelligence. But it takes centuries to build the unique character of each state. And we are going to, and you know, when you do that, so the number one rated country is Norway. The number two is like Denmark. And you know, it, on and on it goes. Spend much less money than we do, and they have the finest education. Uh, in New York City, a few years ago with de Blasio, who is one of the worst mayors in history, by the way, he said, we're going to go with the Norwegian system. That didn't work out too well, okay? <laughs> you know, when they start throwing the teachers out the window, that wasn't working out. They don't do that in Norway. Historically, they haven't thrown too many teachers out the window in Norway. But we're going to make it good. And you know what's going to happen is out of the 50 states, you're going to have 35, like, uh, different ones. Iowa will do good. A lot of the states will do very good. I can think of uh, probably 30, 35 will be, and five will be okay, 10 will be okay. You'll have four or five that will be terrible, but that's okay. We have to control it. But you'll have, you'll have uh, Idaho, you'll have Idaho will do a great job. They, you know, no debt, no this, no, they run a great state. Uh, a lot of places will have great education, will have education that can compete with Norway and Denmark and this, but we'll have certain peace, certain places, and it's the same places like Gavin Newsom, who is a terrible governor. You'll probably have a problem in California, but what you do is you give it to the local communities and you'll, they'll have a great educational system. Uh, you don't want to give it to somebody like Kamala because she destroyed San Francisco and then destroyed the whole state. But reckless migration policy can change it very quickly, and it can destroy everything in its way, just like we've seen in London and Paris and Minneapolis. Look at what's happened in London. Look what's happening in Paris. If Kamala Harris wins this election, she will flood Pennsylvania cities and towns with illegal migrants from all over the world. And Pennsylvania will never be the same. You will never be the same. When I'm president, all migrant flights to Pennsylvania will stop immediately. By the way, all migrant flights. Not only to Pennsylvania, everywhere. No, but how about they get caught? You know, we just found that out a few months ago. They're saying, no, no, we're fighting. In the meantime, people are just pouring in. No, no, we want to do it. And then we learned that the airplanes are flying. That means that, you know, it's just a big con job. Remember this. For a long time, she's been talking about her experience at McDonald's. I worked at McDonald's over the French fries. It was so hot. I think I'm going to go to a McDonald's next week someplace. I'm going to go. It might not be in your, in your place. It, I'm going to go to a McDonald's, and I'm going to work the French fry job for about a half an hour. I want to see how it is. But she said she worked and she grew up in terrible conditions. She worked at McDonald's. It was such, she never worked there. And these fake news reporters will never report it. They don't want to report it because they're fake. They're fake. They don't want to report it. She never worked at McDonald's, but it was a big part of her resume. They went and they went to the different places. Did she work here? Did she work here? Did she work here? She said, we don't know who the hell she is. Leave us alone. We're making hamburgers. <laughs> we will end the invasion of small town Pennsylvania, and we will end the destruction of America. It's, a, it's destroying our country. This country is going to be better than ever before. But we have to do certain things, and we have to do it quickly. And this is one of the big reasons that we're leading in the polls in Pennsylvania. But I think we're doing a lot better than even the polls say. 
In the latest Emerson poll, we're up in Pennsylvania, Arizona, Wisconsin, and Georgia pretty substantially. In today's latest New York Times, if the New York Times gives me a good poll, you know we're way up. The Siena poll. We're up in North Carolina by three, in Georgia by four, and in Arizona by five. Those are swing states, very important. And a poll on a state that Republicans just haven't won in many, many years for president. You have a wonderful governor there who's really working, Glenn Youngkin. He's working hard. He's really pushing it hard. He's in charge of it. And he's doing a good job. A poll just came out in Virginia where we're leading in the state of Virginia. Leading if we win Virginia. If we win Virginia, I don't even know if I need Pennsylvania. But we want to get it anyway. We want to get Pennsylvania. Remember last time? So last time we did better than 60. But in 2016, we were leading by hundreds of thousands of votes in Pennsylvania. And they refused to announce it. Remember? And then they announced Wisconsin or Michigan, which we won. But it, all night long, I said, when are they going to announce Pennsylvania? It would be impossible to catch us based on the numbers. If I lost every vote from then till the end. But they waited till 2 o'clock in the morning, you know? You know why they did that, right? They were trying to see if they could accumulate enough ballots. Very dangerous thing. This is a bad, bad system. And we're winning Pennsylvania. But uh, despite the fact that I, I ha almost hate to say that we're winning why don't I say we're tied so you go out and vote? Or we're down by one. I always say, pretend you're down by one. The point is, you've got to get it vote. we got to win. And we got to win, and I can't take any chances. But here in Pennsylvania, you also need to vote for your next senator, Dave McCormick, who I know for a long time. And he's going to defeat Bob Casey. He's going to stop inflation and secure our borders. Do you want to come up for a second? Do you mind? I love this guy. He, he was, he's a military hero. He's a business hero. And he'll make a great senator. Come on up, David. Say something. All right. Well, Mr. President, thank you so much for that great introduction. And uh, we're going to win the presidency right here in a Senate majority in the Keystone State. So thank you. And the reason we're going to win is because people in Pennsylvania feel like they've lost their economic security. Prices going out of control. The war on fossil fuels. They've lost their physical security crime in our cities, illegal immigration, 4,000 fentanyl deaths, and people around the world, adversaries challenging us. So people in Pennsylvania want change. And what I tell them is, listen, it's a, it's a battle between common sense and these radical liberal policies under Kamala Harris. And Bob Casey's going to vote for her 99% of the time because he is a weak leader and a rubber stamp for this liberal agenda. And I say also... This is a race between strength and weakness. And when I talk about strength with G.T. Thompson and Sean Parnell, I say, listen, I was standing there at Butler, 15 feet away. I saw you get shot. I saw you go down. And I saw you come up with your fist and say, fight, fight, fight. That's why we're going to win. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you Thank you very much. And he's a good man, I'll tell you. Very successful guy. He goes through a lot to do this. And Bob Casey, I can tell you, I was there for four years at the highest, highest, highest level. I met everybody. This guy does nothing for Pennsylvania. He's not going to help your oil, your fracking. He's not going to help anything. And David will be a warrior for your commonwealth. He will be a warrior. Total warrior. So thank you, David. Thank you very much. We're also pleased to be joined. Oh, I have so many people here. I have so many. I have congressmen. I have senators. It's brutal. You know, when you introduce people, you always miss a couple of them. But I'm going to apologize because I see somebody there that I think is a certain senator, but I'm not 100% sure. 
The eyes aren't what they used to be, I'll be totally honest. The brain is better than it used to be, but the eyes aren't what they used to be. But you always get yourself in trouble. But I'm going to introduce somebody that's been amazing, Congressman Glenn G.T. Thompson, who's sitting with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, G.T. Thank you very much. Great job. He's a warrior. Former Congressman Fred Keller. Fred, thank you very much. I saw him sitting there. A great gentleman who's a real leader, state Senate majority leader, Joe Pittman. Joe? Whoa! Whoa! Hey, you're popular, Joe. What a family you have, too. What a great family. Thank you very much, Joe. Mayor of Slippery Rock, J.D. Longo. Thank you, J.D. Great job. Thank you. Great job. And a friend of mine who's a warrior and a very strong guy, a tough guy, they had a bad, bad deal with that election. It was terrible what happened. Sean Parnell. Sean, stand up. Yeah. They played around with 25,000 ballots. That was another unique one, wasn't it? What a disgrace that was. Anyway, we're six weeks away from the most important election in the history of our country. And here are the facts. Kamala Harris wants open borders. She will deliver rampant inflation, and she wants to pack the Supreme Court. You know that. Instead of nine justices like we have now, Kamala wants to bring it up very substantially. Now, the, this is a number I heard two days ago, potentially to 25 justices so she can rig the system, meaning not she, the whole party can rig the system, the party of communists. She wants to bring it up to 25. That's the first time I heard that number, but I heard it very loud and clear. She might as well have Congress. You know, Congress is supposed to be that, not the Supreme Court. No, they were very brave, the Supreme Court, very brave, and they take a lot of hits because of it. It should be illegal what happens. You know, you have these guys uh, like playing the ref, like the great Bobby Knight, these people are, should be put in jail the way they talk about our judges and our justices, trying to get them to sway their vote, sway their decision. Kamala was an original creator of Defund the Police Movement. Okay, so she was in Defund the Police for years. Anybody who wants to defund the police for even one week is not worthy of being president of the United States. Can you imagine? That's where she came from. That's where she came from. That's her theory, and that's her way, and that's her policy. You know the policies? She's changed 15 policies. You know, I've, over the years, I've been like a student of <laughs> politics for a long time, but I was on the other side. I was writing checks all the time, right? But I was on the other side. But I've never seen anyone go 15 for 15. I've seen guys change one policy, maybe two, when they were little ones. She changed everything. She loves oil all of a sudden. She loves the police about, when did that start? A few months ago. She, but let me tell you, they immediately go back to where they came from. Kamala Harris vowed to abolish ICE. These are great, great patriots, ICE. They take such hits. They are so tough and love our country so much. They get MS-13 out of our country. Under border czar Harris, Venezuela gangs, all these Venezuelan gangs have taken over entire areas of different places on our, in our country, and she supports free health care for illegal aliens while our hospitals and emergency rooms are being overrun by migrants who come up here because they say, come up and we'll give you. Look, I feel sorry. I have a bigger heart than anybody, but you can't tell people to come up. We're going to give you education. We're going to give you free health care because they're going to come up. And if you stop saying that, they won't come any longer. You can't do this. And Newsom does it and all of them do it. And you can't do it. But migrants make it virtually un it's unusable. I mean, the, the states become unusable, the school systems, the hospital. She lost more than, this is a number that's the worst number that you'll ever hear. I mean, think of it. Think of a big stadium that holds 55,000 people. She lost more than 325,000 migrant children. They're gone. Nobody knows where they are. Many of them are dead. 
Many of them are in sex trade. Many of them, but many of them are dead. They've been trafficked. They've been raped. 325,000 children are missing. If one child is missing, it's too many. Think of it. Under her, 325,000 children. As California attorney, she will destroy our country. As California attorney general, she redefined child sex trafficking, a term, deadly weapon and rape of an unconscious person as nonviolent crimes. She said they are all nonviolent. She praised the idea of 70 to 80 percent tax. She wants a tax rate of 70 to 80 percent. Will you be happy paying 80 percent? I don't think so. She wants to ban the sale of gas-powered vehicles, which will destroy the Pennsylvania way of life. And she even endorsed free sex changes. At first, they said, you got to go back and tell me this. And this was recently, she endorsed free sex changes for illegal aliens in detention centers all over our country at taxpayer expense. You don't hear this on Oprah, do you? Think of that. Sex change, you're detained. You're being held in a detention center and you say, I want to change. I want to become a woman. And they have to give you the operation, which is an immensely expensive operation on top of everything else. $250,000 at least. And then all the drugs involved and everything else. She's sick. I'm telling you, if you put her in, I don't think you will lay this. Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam, will you put her in? I don't think so. Stand up, Uncle Sam. No, it's terrible. As DA and as Attorney General, she destroyed San Francisco and she destroyed all of California. It's like a different place. It's not recognizable. And now she's coming to destroy the United States of America and we're not going to let it happen. We can't let it happen. She led the change in California law so that if you steal less than $950, you are not prosecuted. And if you steal more than $950, you're actually not prosecuted either. You want to. But how about this? The kids are walking in with computers. They're putting stuff, they're adding it up so that if it's less than $950, they go into a judge. They say, Your Honor, it's less than $950. Oh, okay, case dismissed. How sick? Is this country sick? Less than $1,000, you don't get prosecuted. She even lied about Joe Biden's cognitive abilities. Remember, they, she said, oh, he's fine, he's fine. A great disservice to the American people because he's negotiating with Russia, China, North Korea. He's negotiating with people that are probably in a state of shock. They <laughs> say, can you believe this? Because they're all at the top of their game. I know all of them, they're at the top of their game. And we are at the most dangerous point in the history of our country. We could end up in World War III because of this lunatic and her. She's so much worse. She wants to take away your guns and your rifles in violation of the Second Amendment. And she's a communist, and everybody knows it. And our country is not ready for a communist president and won't be for a long, long, long time to come. That's why less than two months from now, we are going to tell her that we've had enough. Our country can't take it anymore. Kamala, you've been a terrible vice president. You'll be the worst president in the history of our country, superseding even crooked Joe Biden. Kamala, you are a disaster to the United States of America. Kamala, you are fired. You're fired. Get out. Get out. All right, so we have to talk business. I always thought women liked me. I never thought I had a problem. But the fake news keeps saying women don't like me. I don't believe it. I think, I think, you know why they like, 
They like to have strong borders. They like to have safety. Nothing personal. I think they like me. But I make this statement. Thank you. I love you too. I love you too. Thank you. But I think they like me because I represent something that's very important. I make this statement to the great women of our country. Sadly, women are poorer than they were four years ago, much poorer, are less healthy than they were four years ago, are less safe on the streets than they were four years ago, are paying much higher prices for groceries and everything else than they were four years ago, are more stressed and depressed and unhappy than they were four years ago, and are less optimistic and confident in the future than they were four years ago. I believe that. I will fix all of that and fast, and at long last, this nation and national nightmare will end. It will end. We've got to end this national nightmare. Because I am your protector. I want to be your protector. As president, I have to be your protector. I hope you don't make too much of it. I hope the fake news doesn't go, oh, he wants to be their protector. Well, I am. As president, I have to be your protector. I will make you safe at the border, on the sidewalks of your now violent cities, in the suburbs where you are under migrant criminal siege, and with our military protecting you from foreign enemies, of which we have many today because of the incompetent leadership that we have. You will no longer be abandoned, lonely, or scared. You will no longer be in danger. You're not going to be in danger any longer. You will no longer have anxiety from all of the problems our country has today. You will be protected, and I will be your protector. Women. Women will be happy, healthy, confident, and free. You will no longer be thinking about abortion. It's all they talk about, abortion, because we've done something that nobody else could have done. It is now where it always had to be with the states and a vote of the people. And it is and will be with powerful exceptions like those that Ronald Reagan insisted on for rape, incest, and the life of the mother, but not allowing for Democrat-demanded late-term abortion in the seventh, eighth, or ninth month, or even execution of a baby after birth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Such an important topic. For 52 years, all legal scholars and experts wanted abortion to be with the states and to have a vote of the people. 52 years they fought for this. Republicans, Democrats, liberals, and conservatives. Everyone wanted abortion out of the federal government and into the states. Six brilliant and very brave justices of the United States Supreme Court were able to do that for you, and they did it. It will never move back to the federal government. We'll never have the votes to do so, and nobody should want it to because it must now have that very important vote of the people, something sought for many, many years. I have always defended and supported IVF fertility, and so has the Republican Party, and we gave you and give you total support on IVF. Don't let anyone tell you different. We are much stronger than the Democrats. We want beautiful babies in our country. We want you to have your beautiful, beautiful, perfect baby. We want those babies, and we need them. And I will protect women at a level never seen before. They will finally be healthy, hopeful, safe, and secure. Their lives will be happy, 
beautiful and great again, and it's my, my honor to do so. It's my honor to do so. Because that's all they talk about. Our country's a mess. It's a mess. The borders are bad. The trade is bad. The inflation is bad. It's the worst time in your lives in our country. We're being laughed at by everybody in the world. Everything is wrong with our country. Nothing's right. And all they talk about is abortion. The fact is, for 52 years, they've been trying to do what we did. And the votes are all taking place in Ohio. It took place in Kansas. And it was more liberal than people would have thought. But it's taking place all over the land. And the vote's going to change, and it's being negotiated. But it's the vote of the people, and it's with the exceptions. We want to have the exceptions. Some people have to follow their heart. But it's hard not to have the exceptions. It really is. But for, that's all they talk about. The country's falling apart. We're going to end up in World War III. And all they can talk about is abortion. That's all they talk about. And it really no longer pertains because we've done something on abortion that nobody thought was possible. And I give those three brilliant, if you think about it, 